just want to welcome you again. Uh, my name is Pastor Deandra Hilaire. I want to introduce myself to you and welcome you to Going Places with Jesus Ministries. And I'm here to tell you that it wasn't an accident that you came on either on our page or if you joined us this morning, it wasn't an accident that you are here. God has something in store for you today. And so hold on. After you make sure you grab your notebook, make sure you grab your Bible and your pens. And after you've done all of that, hold on, because God has something in store for you this morning. He has a word for you. He has a message just for you this morning. And so we're so excited and we can't wait to, to dive in and just begin to give God thanks because he has been so good. Has anybody had that experience? Has anybody have that revelation just this week of how good God has been? Come on, I, I want somebody to nod, shake their head, say, give me something back. Has anybody had that experience just this week of how awesome and amazing God has been. I know that I have. God has been showing himself up for me. God has been speaking to me. God has been delivering me and blessing me. And I have been feeling such a release from the presence of God, from that experience with God, from prayer with God, koinonia with God. And so if you have been having that experience, I encourage you, if you can, just to open up your mics for a little bit and begin to lift up his holy name. Hallelujah. Lord God, we thank you. We honor you with our voices this morning, Lord God. We honor you with our hearts this morning, Jesus. We honor you with our minds, oh God. We honor you with our very bodies, with our being, Lord Father God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory this morning, Lord God. Lord God, our glory, the glory doesn't belong to us. The praise doesn't belong to us. The adoration doesn't belong to us. It all belongs to you, Jesus. And so we want to thank you, Lord God. We want to magnify you, oh God. We want to lift you up, oh God, this morning. Blessed be your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, the Bible says that they, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Hallelujah. There is something about the waiting on the Lord. There's something about that patience, that time that we take to wait on God, to press in, to say, I'm not going to move until God tells me to move. I'm not going to move until the presence of the Lord ushers me. I'm not going to move until I feel the presence of the most high God. When we wait on the Lord, Jesus said, huh, Jesus was went up into the mountain. I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, but Jesus said, when he went up into the mountain to pray, he noticed he came back down and the disciples were sleeping. And Jesus said to them, he said, but couldn't you watch a little bit? Wouldn't you wait a little bit? Couldn't you wait a, just a little bit? Watch with me just for an hour, just for a little bit. There is something about the waiting on God. There is something about the watching while we wait on the Lord. What does the Bible said? What? He says, be of good courage. He says, wait on the Lord. What is the promise that he says? He says, I'm going to give you strength. I'm going to renew you. I'm going to empower you. I'm going to, oh my God, lift you back up. All you have to do is wait on me. Don't move from your position. Don't hey, don't get distracted. Don't fall asleep. Come on. Sometimes we want to get sleepy. We want to relax while we wait. But what does Jesus says? He says to watch and wait. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord. Come on. Some of you need to come back and renew and shift yourself back into a watching, into a waiting on God. There is an expectation when we are watching and waiting on the Lord. We're not just waiting uh, passively. We're not waiting in from a position of apathy. We are waiting with an expectation. I'm completely off book, but God is saying to you this morning, come on, will you come on, shift back a little bit and wait on the Lord. We've been talking about this all week amongst our leadership. Wait on God. Wait on God. God is going to do something so amazing. I'm telling you, saints of God, I'm not even asking 
asking you, I am telling you that if you just wait on the Lord and trust in him and have faith in him, that God will move mountains. He will do the impossible thing that you have been praying about. He will do the thing that you have been fasting about. He will do the thing that you have been seeking his face in the midnight hour about. God is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful to move on your behalf if you just wait on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Roseanne, who is going to lead us uh, into our, read our scripture for us this morning. Share with us that scripture this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Good morning, everyone. The um, scripture um, will be taken from Psalm, Psalms 40 verses 1 to 5. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. I want, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the mere clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that make it the Lord his trust, his trust and respect it not the proud, nor such a turn, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O oh Lord my God, are they wonderful works which thou hast done and thy thoughts which are to us ward they cannot be reckoned upon i mean what well, the lord has been touching my heart on on transitions our world is facing major transitions that the government has no control over our world does not know what to do in the face of these transitions. So I wanna to touch on some steps of handling and going through transitions. The reality is, uh, the reality is this, most of us don't like change. And the reality is, if it's up to us, we will remain in our comfort zone, we will remain where we are, and not move. That's the reality. We just won't shift. I'm being honest. I'm being transparent. I'm being transparent. Me, maybe not you, but the reality is there is sometimes a mindset in Pastor Roger that needs to shift. There's a mindset in you, a mindset or a way of thinking that needs to shift. And sometimes transition is not for the entire world. We're thinking just globally, but uh, transition is for you, for me personally. It is a personal transformation of change and growth that needs to happen and take place. And the only way it's going to happen is if God begins to shift some things. Lord have mercy. Y'all and y'all, he has to now step in and shift some things, change some things up, move things out of place. If we look at the sea, we look at the ocean, I, my God, my, my wife loves the sea. I, I, I love it, but she loves it more. <laughs> and let me tell you something, a lot of us, we just love the ocean. And we look at the ocean, we see there are different types of currents. There are surface, surface currents. There are deep current currents. There are, there are different tides, there are rip tides, rip currents, excuse me, changes and shifts. And the reality is, uh, a surfer cannot stay on the same wave. A surfer has to know when daba kande kadabo kundebe kase debe. I'm telling you, this is a life changing word for me, and I and I'm giving it. Let me tell you something. There are some changes and some shifts that are happening that is beyond our control. We have no control over it. No matter what we try to do, we will not have control over it. Are you listening to me? 
And the reality, a season of transition is a time where we experience sudden or significant change. It's a time where new things are happening spiritually, new things are happening naturally, new things are happening mentally, and new things are happening emotionally. And we have no control over it. Why? Because God is doing it. Important about Let's look at, understand times of transition will always reveal our character. It will always reveal who we are. It will always reveal what's inside of our hearts. Understand that what's in our heart, the transition did not reveal something new. It reveals something that was already there. Come on, somebody. It's not something new that just happened. It was always in my heart. Y'all ain't hearing me. And transitions and shifts and changes. My time. Okay, David. Lord have mercy. It begins to reveal what's in Pastor Roger's heart. It reveals what's going on within me. And God now has to now shift those uh, shift those character flaws. Character tests. <laughs> because it's amazing to me. You pray for the job. God now gives you the job. Let's check the character test. You're complaining about your new boss on the new job now. I'm so grateful I'm not God. Because to please people is extremely difficult. That's why God has to allow transitions and shiftings to take place because sometimes we just can't be pleased. Listen to me, saints of God. Huh. There are ways to graciously go through your season of transition. Bear with me. Please bear with me. You don't want to just go through it. You want to go through it graciously. Come on, somebody. There are some people. Now, Esther, she could have gone through all that hell without grace. How many know that? But how many know Esther graciously went through the transition? Because how many know when you don't go through it graciously, you can make a muck of the situation. You can make the situation worse. You can make the situation turn from good to bad, bad to worse. Lord have mercy. Are you listening to me? So number one, you got to apply what you've been taught. Don't forget to use what you already know. You already know God is able. So now in the position of transition, you got to know, even though I don't understand, God understands. Even though I it's uncomfortable, uncomfortable for me, I know that God has a plan and all things are going to work out for my good. Oh my God. Number two, stay deeply rooted in Christ. This is not the time to shift away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus went on a 40 day fast in the wilderness. And you know who led, them, led him there? He didn't just walk there. He didn't just so happen to stumble there. The Bible says the Holy Spirit transitioned him there. Oh, my God. He was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness. How many know there's some things in us that I'm going to tell you right now. There's some things in me that's got to die. It's just too alive. There's some mental positions. Oh, my God. That has to shift. Can I, can I go further? If we keep it real, there is a generational curse that I have been fighting and you have been fighting. That's why the battle has been so severe against us. And we are the first in our family to fight against it and to have hell against it. Why? Because it cannot go to our children. How many know in transition, when you're going through transition, there's some things 
that needs to be changed inside of us that we may not want to change. Oh, my God. So guess what? Back to number three. Seasons of transition often require greater faith. Don't get scared. I said, don't get scared. This is the time to get bold. Bold. I need you to type bold in your faith. So type, type bold or just say bold. Bold. My God. Type it in. Type it in. Bold. In my faith. Why must we, why must we be bold in our faith? My God, give me a little bit more time. Because God told Joshua, what did God tell Joshua? Son, in this season of transition, let me give you a clue of what you need to do. Be courageous. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. 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 He said, be thou courageous. In other words, you're going to have to have courage to face these changes and transitions that I am bringing you through. Because how many know only God can bring us through some situations. Hallelujah. In a time of transition, number four, always maintain a soft heart towards God and towards people. Because when you're in a transition, how many know you can get very callous? You can get very tough. You can get very bold. Sometimes when you're going through uncomfortable situations and your back is against the wall, you want to see an angry, you want to see an angry bear? Place an angry bear. Back an angry bear against the wall. You're going to see a side of that bear you've never seen before. And oftentimes, when we are in transition and, our, and we feel as though our back is against the wall, it's how you look at it. Am I going through what I'm going through for nothing? Pastor D said it earlier. No, we're not going through anything. We're not just going through it just to go through it. No, God is doing something that we don't understand. Our world is going through changes. This is not happening only in America. This is happening throughout the entire globe, saints of God. So back to number four, always maintain our soft heart to God and his amen. God bless you, saints of God. I love you. I'm praying for you. Have a blessed, blessed day. I pray that everyone who heard this word was blessed in some way because I tell you, I was blessed. Bye.